What is going on, everybody? I go by the name of Kari, and I want to thank you guys for joining me here today on Sneaker Fetish. To say that a lot of sneakers have been coming out lately is a bit of an understatement. If you guys are anything like me, your bank account has been screaming at you lately for buying so many shoes. But the question for today, as we take a look at six of the hottest sneakers that have come out lately is... Are there too many sneakers coming out? Are there too many shoes that are getting released at this point to the point where it doesn't even matter anymore? But before we can answer that question, we got a few sneakers to look at. So without further ado, let's get into it. Boom. And there it is, ladies and gentlemen, this is the Air Jordan 6 Electric Green. I've heard y'all say it. I've heard you guys say it a thousand times but I like them. I'm sorry, y'all. I like this shoe. It's simple, but it's executed well, and I think that the colors are kind of right up my alley, but let's take a little deeper look. All right, I'll start with the upper here, plain black upper, primarily black all around the sneaker. You got a really nice new buck upper on the shoe as well. Of course, you have the electric green hits going down the midsole. Taking the top down, look at the shoe here. You have the electric green lace lock there. You have the electric green stitch Jumpman on the shroud. Moving around to the heel of the shoe, you got the Jumpman Air that's in black stitched into the heel there. You also have that kind of Ferrari spoiler looking heel tab here with that splash of electric green as well. Moving to the outsole of the sneaker here. On the outsole, you have a semi-translucent outsole here. Looks like it should glow in the dark, but for whatever reason it doesn't. But you also have that electric green Jumpman right in the middle of the foot. I'm not even gonna bother taking it out, but as far as the insole goes, all black insole, electric green Jumpman on the heel. And that's it. It's a simple shoe, simple concept, pretty well done. The build of it is pretty decent because we're gonna talk about quality with a lot of these sneakers today as well. Let's just get the elephant out of the room right now. This is yet again another iteration in a primarily player exclusive colorway for a college that Jordan brand has done in the past. They decided to bring it back, water it down a little bit, mass produce it and give it to us. This time they made it happen with the Air Jordan 6 Oregon player edition that I believe was a player edition for the basketball team. There was a black version and a white version, I believe, for the women's basketball team. That version, of course, had the Oregon O on the quarter panels of the shoe here, and it had an electric green wings logo on the back of the shoe. This time, they, of course, taken all of that branding out, and they just gave us kind of this generic electric green and black Air Jordan 6. But again, I feel like these are going to grow on people when they start seeing a lot more people with these on their feet. It's the wrong time of the year for this sneaker to be worn. It's new buck. It's it's a little thicker, the colors are dark, and I think that you're gonna see a lot more of this when people are back to black skinny jeans going into the fall. They're gonna throw on something that's volt green, volt green top with it. They're gonna rock these, it's gonna be a clean outfit. And at that point, I think a lot more people are going to want this sneaker. They're gonna try to go back and get a pair. I'm gonna tell you like this, if I were you, I'd go ahead and grab up a pair now and keep them on ice, as opposed to waiting for them to get more popular when it gets colder outside and you might have to end up paying a little bit more money. But a lot of people said that they passed on these. I actually asked a lot of you guys on Twitter, why in the world did you pass on these? And your answers were pretty much the same. Either you didn't want to spend the money on it because something else was coming out that you really wanted, or you just weren't a fan of the colors. And hey, listen, I'm here for it either way, but I'm going to tell y'all like this, these here, I feel like are going to appreciate in time. I think that this sneaker is a bit underrated for now. And granted, it's not in Oregon, but of course we've seen a lot of other more popular sneakers that have been kind of orchestrated after a player edition shoe from a college that have done very well. Sometimes at the forefront, like the University Blue Jordan 4. And sometimes it takes a little more time for people to acclimate themselves to it. But I don't know guys, I like these, but we're not gonna spend too much time on these. Without further ado, let's jump into the next shoe. Boom. And there it is, ladies and gentlemen. This is the Nike Dunk Low White and Team Green, otherwise known as the Michigan State. It's another Dunk Low. It's another Dunk Low. If you haven't gotten your hands on a pair of Dunks so far in 2021, or if you have not gotten your hands on a pair of Dunks since mid-2020 at this point, I really don't know what to tell you because while Dunks may not be the absolute easiest sneakers to come across, they're definitely releasing in more places and higher quantities and more colors. And if you haven't been able to get your hands on one pair of Dunks, and there's been like over 120 different Dunks that have dropped since mid-2020, I don't know, man. Y'all might just want to hang it up. All right, guys, this one again is very simple in concept. It looks just like pretty much every other dunk low that's come out, except this time you have the classic white in the quarter panels around the collar of the sneaker and in the toe box. And then you have that, what they call team green on the mud guards wrapping around the toe box, on the eyelids, and of course, wrapping down through the quarter panels of the sneaker and on the swoosh. Taking the top down, look at this one. Classic green laces, no extra laces. You're not going to get that 400 bucks, but you get this white nylon tongue with the white white and green Nike tag as well. Moving around to the heel of these, you have the white stitch Nike on the back with that green on the back heel tab as well. And I'm not gonna take the insole out on these as well. It's pretty 
much stuck in there pretty good. But green insole with the orange Nike OG emblem on the heels. And that's pretty much it when it comes to the Dunk Low White and Team Green or Spartan Green, Michigan State, whatever you want to call them. Now, if you guys know, you know that this sneaker just recently released in its low top iteration along with its rival sneaker, the Maze in Navy Blue, which of course made to represent the University of Michigan. Now, as you guys know, University of Michigan Wolverines and of course the Michigan State Spartans have had a long-standing rivalry, especially in football, since a very long time ago. As a matter of fact, the first time that the two teams met was in 1898. That's 33 years after slavery ended. So that's that's a long time to have a rivalry. That rivalry football game, just so you know, has had a 113 meetings in Michigan. University of Michigan actually leads with more wins, and they've even had the longest winning streak, winning 14 times in a row. That's quite a stretch. Now, we also saw a high top version of both of these sneakers drop. I believe it was late 2020, around September-ish, October-ish, and people started talking at that point about how there was going to be a reiteration of the Be True to Your School pack back from 2008 that featured a number of Nike Dunk highs that actually had some very familiar colorways that look like different colleges and doggone it that's exactly what they did so we've seen the Syracuse dunks we've now seen the Kentucky dunks we've seen Michigan we've seen Michigan State on and on and on it really feels like the dunk is getting the Jordan 1 treatment right now when it comes to just how many pairs of dunks how many different things they're starting to bring back now so many different campaigns so many different colorways and my question to you guys is number one did you guys cop these and number two why are there so many dunks coming out? Why do you guys think that they're doing dunks the way that they're doing Jordan 1s? Are they just completely oversaturating the market right now? Or is Nike just printing money by selling us so many things that everybody just keeps buying and buying and buying these days? I don't really know what's going on. Now, this actually was my preferred pair out of the two. I wasn't as big of a fan, but that's just for aesthetics. I like the white and green. I think it's a little easier to wear, but I have no allegiance to either one of the schools. I know some people like the homie talks with TJ. She's a Michigan Wolverines fan. So I know that she got the highs. I don't remember if she has the lows. She might have the lows. I don't know. Check out her channel and you guys will be able to see what she does with those. But I like these a little bit better. And apparently you guys like these a little bit better as well because currently these are going for around 250 to 275 on the resale markets. Whereas the Michigan version of the Dunk Lows are only going for roughly 200 and in some instances even cheaper than that. So it looks like you guys actually like these as well. But sound off down below. Let me know which one is you guys' favorites between the Michigan State and the University of Michigan version of the Dunk Lows. Lows. All right, on to the next shoe. Boom. And there it is, ladies and gentlemen. This is the Nike and Fragment Dunk High Beijing. This one is a little bit more controversial. Now, if you guys know, you know, this actually is made as a re-release or a new representation of the Fragment Dunk that actually dropped back in 2010 as a part of a city pack that dropped. That was three pairs of Fragment Dunk Highs, one made to represent London, one made to represent New York, and then one made to represent Beijing. Now, before we get too deep into what a lot of people have been saying, and a lot of spicy comments about this sneaker. Let's take a little deeper look. All right, guys, now, unlike the 2010 pair that actually had inverted color blocking on the left and right sneaker, this shoe actually has the same color blocking and the same color placements on both the left and the right. So what you see on this one is exactly what you're gonna get on the other one. Starting with the quarter panels here, you guys have this purple kind of wine colored quarter panel here, also wrapping around the collar of the sneaker and on the toe box. Now that's offset by a little more premium leather, and I use that term very loosely loosely a little more premium leather on the mud guards wrapping around the toe box on the eyelids and then of course on these detached wings on the back panel of the sneaker as well you also get the same black leather on the swoosh taking a top down look at the shoe here nike is really not giving us a lot of extra laces with any of these shoes lately we got no extra with these even for 150 dollars price tag you get the regular black laces with these black nylon tongue with the black and purple nike tag here and then you can also see a little bit more what that leather looks like down here in the toe box as well it's it's soft i will give it that it's a little softer but it's not anything to really write home about now moving back around to the lateral side of the sneaker of course the two design elements that gets everybody's attention number one is the big lightning bolt fragment logo letting you know this is once again a collaboration they put that same emblem for whatever reason on the same place on all of their collaborations you also have kind of the technical factory looking writing on the lateral side of the shoe as well that was teased with the travis scott wanted fragment collab that's upcoming i believe in the fall but of course, we also saw it here, style codes, color codes, 
fragment design, so on and so forth. When you move this sneaker around to the back of it on the heel, I will say that's where you can start seeing some of the issues that I started having as far as quality on this sneaker. The stitching even looks a little bit uneven on the heel tap here. It might just be my eye, but you guys sound off down below and let me know if this looks a little funny to you. On the outsole of the shoe here, you got this black outsole, regular dunk high outsole here, just solid color, nothing really different there. And on the insole of the shoe, you have a black insole with the purple fragment double lightning bolt logo on the heel. And that's pretty much it when it comes to the fragment dunk Hi. Now, here's the deal. A lot of people have been saying that, number one, they are not a fan of this new 2021 iteration of the sneaker for two reasons. Number one, a lot of people said that the quality was trash. And number two, a lot of people said that they just prefer the OG. Now, in this instance, I'm going to have to side with people that prefer the OG. While I have an appreciation for the fact that this isn't really more like a what the, like a mismatched looking color blocking here, I will say that I do believe that the quality on the 2010 pair was better. Now, I say that to say this, and I'm actually going to bring up that other dunk low just for a comparison real quick. In my humble opinion, I don't think that these leathers are the same. Now, everybody knows that the dunk low leather, the regular $100, $110 dunk low leather, it's not that great. The reason why people are rocking dunks these days, for me, are one of two reasons. They're easy to wear, they're more affordable than retros, and Travis Scott made them super hot. That's one of three reasons, sorry. But when you compare them to a little bit more luxury sneaker that did cost a little bit more money. Remember the fragment highs, they cost 150, whereas I believe these cost either 100 or $110. I can't remember exactly how much. You really can tell the difference in the leathers when you start pressing on the toe boxes of the shoe. Now, these of course still have kind of that paper in there, but you can tell that it's a little bit softer on the fragment, a little bit softer. Now, granted the leather on the 2010 pair, I do believe was a little bit better, but I think that there's a big difference between quality and quality control. And I want to kind of dig into that just a little bit when it comes to the fragment highs because they're getting a bit of a bum rap because I think that people are kind of confusing quality with quality control. The materials themselves, in my opinion, aren't that bad for a $150 sneaker. We spent $150 on a lot of sneakers that do not even have this good of materials on them. Let's just be honest. But my problem that I had on this sneaker was that there were so many quality control issues in the craftsmanship and the build of this sneaker. That's why I really feel like this sneaker was lacking. You guys see that loose thread right there. A lot of loose threads on this shoe. More loose threads on the bottom by the toe box. I don't even know what's going on with the glue and the separation of the swoosh here on the medial side of the shoe. Got a glue stain right here where my finger is right here. I can't even really even take that off, but there's a little glue pop right there. And even more loose stitching right here around the swoosh and on the wing of the shoe here as well, right in this area. There's a lot of loose stitching on this sneaker. The stitching was not very tight on this shoe, but I think I understand why. So I looked at the production dates. This sneaker was produced between December 2nd, 2020 and January 30th, 2021. This Dunk Lowe's production dates were also December 2nd, 2020 to January 28th, 2021. These sneakers were in production at the exact same time. And these sneakers were rushed because they were more limited. These sneakers, I think they took their time with a little bit more, maybe because the materials were a little bit different and they didn't require quite as much as the Dunk High. So if you want my honest opinion, I think that one of these sneakers was gonna be the one that went by the wayside as far as quality and unfortunately it looks like it went to the more limited collaboration which sucks but when you have so many sneakers that are literally in production at the exact same time there's no earthly way that you're going to be able to get the exact same sneaker with the exact same quality every single time nike is trying to pump out so many sneakers that yeah the quality is starting to diminish a little bit on these shoes and we hate to see it especially because we're still spending our hard-earned money on these sneakers but the more that we keep buying everything up the more we keep telling nike to make more and more and more so we're going to keep seeing issues like this the more sneakers that nike tries to produce in parallel with one another but you guys can sign up down below and let me know what you guys think about the fragment dunks as well and um i'm interested to see what you have to say all right let's move on to the next one now this next shoe is so special that before we even get to the shoe we have to get to the towel that was included in the packaging but as you can see the towel is in blue and white and it says puerto rico te quiero and what that means of course is puerto rico i love you obviously we are talking about the puerto rican culture and the puerto rican influence at nike and in society and especially based in new york this towel actually i believe has a nike nyc tag on it right there. So this towel actually is from Nike NYC, but was included in every box of these sneakers. Without further ado, let's take a look. Boom. 
And there it is, ladies and gentlemen. This is the Nike Air Max 97 Puerto Rico. This is a good shoe, right? This is a good looking shoe, man. It's basically a silver bullet, but with Puerto Rican accents. And I think that Nike did a fantastic job of not doing the most with this sneaker. Let's take a little deeper look. All right, guys, starting with the upper on the sneaker itself. It's an all 3M upper. I can't wait to show you guys what it looks like because when I tell you this sneaker glows, this sneaker glows. But outside of that, down here in the quarter panels, right above the midsole here where it's vented, you guys can see this red swoosh here with the navy blue outline. Taking a top down look at the shoe here. Regular kind of silver bullet looking Air Max 97 look, but the beautiful thing here, the tag on the front of the tongue here with the Puerto Rican flag with the star right in the middle, front and center of the sneaker. I love that. Moving around to the heel of the shoe, you have a blue and red pull tab on the heel of the sneaker as well, just with the regular Air Max. No different branding there, but still in that same kind of color blocking with the rest of the shoe coinciding with the Puerto Rican flag. Finally, we get some extra laces with a pair of one of these sneakers here. Now you get the regular silver laces with these, or you can swap those out for the navy blue, red, and white laces as well, which these I think would pop really, really nicely with this sneaker. On the outsole of the left shoe only, right here in the heel, you're also gonna get the Puerto Rican flag right here in the air unit on the heel as well. The rest of it, of course, is accented in those same Puerto Rican flag, red, white, and blue colors as well, very nice. And on the insole of the sneaker here, navy blue insole with the white Nike swoosh here, right underneath that, Akimi Kedo, which basically means, loosely translated, here I stand or here I stay. And I think that's beautiful because it's very indicative of the Puerto Rican people as a whole. The Puerto Rican people, if you guys know a lot of Puerto Ricans, you know that Puerto Ricans are very hardworking people, very loyal, very stylish, and also extremely proud of their heritage. And Nike, I believe, has done a fantastic job of highlighting Puerto Rican culture in a lot of their footwear and branding and apparel and things like that. Now, I was really excited to see this sneaker come out because if you guys remember, there's still a little sour taste in people's mouths and Nike still has a little bit of egg on their face from that Puerto Rico Air Force One debacle that ended up ultimately resulting in Nike canceling the release of the Puerto Rico Air Force One because of the reverse flag on the lateral side of the shoe. Now, thank goodness people seem to be a lot more happier with the way that the flag was represented, even though some people still said that they did not like the fact that the star was facing in the direction that it's facing on the tongue tag, but it seems like it was good enough at least for Nike to be able to release the product this time. Puerto Ricans don't play about their flag now. Granted, this sneaker was was still a bit limited, but it did seem like a lot of the people that wanted to get their hands on these, especially my brothers and sisters that are of Puerto Rican descent, were really able to get their hands on these. These were a bit of a tough drop. They didn't release a ton of places, but if you were able to get your hands on them, congratulations, because I'm gonna tell you like this, I'm pretty sure that the resale value on this sneaker is going to go up. I don't see it getting too crazy, but I definitely see it going up higher than the 175, I believe these sneakers cost. I mean, my goodness, look at the way that these sneakers shine, boy. Too much 3M is never enough 3M when it comes to these sneakers here. Just look at all the 3M that surrounds these sneakers. When you wear these at night, you're gonna light up like a disco ball and that's not a bad thing. These are some good looking shoes. So were you guys able to grab the Air Max 97 Puerto Rico's for 2021? Or unfortunately were these ones that you ended up taking the L on? Or are you still looking for a pair of these? Sound off, let me know. All right, that's the Puerto Rico 97s. Let's move on to the Yeezy portion of the video. Boom. and. Hold on. Boom. And there it is, ladies and gentlemen. This is the Yeezy Boost 700 minivan in cyan blue. Well, I finally got my hands on a pair of minivans. And uh, they're a little worse in person than I thought that they were gonna be. Let's take a look. All right, guys, now the bottom half of the sneaker is not really much that we gotta talk about. Basically, they just chopped off the bottom half of a Yeezy 700 Boost version one, and they put this new upper on here. Well, it's not really new, it's new to me, I guess. You guys have seen the minivans before, but they wrapped this thing in basically a rain jacket and called it the minivans. Now, I don't know why they call these the minivans, but it is what it is. Now, the first thing that's gonna jump out at you about this sneaker is the bright color. Of course, the 700 minivans are no for being very, very bright colors, oranges and yellows, and of course, in this case, the cyan blue. So basically, it's a one-piece upper in this interesting nylon material, like I said, that basically feels like a rain jacket, 
all across the upper of the sneaker, accented by this huge 700 and reflective 3M on the lateral side of the shoe. Taking a top down look at the shoe here, you have kind of a synthetic leather tongue in the middle here with the Infinity lacing system. This pair does not have an extra set of laces, so you're pretty much stuck with the Infinity laces unless you got an extra pair laying around somewhere. Now down here in the toe box area, it is interesting. It does still have kind of that, that forked kind of design that you have known to love on the different Yeezy 700 models, but you also have these accents of 3M on the mud guards as well. Moving around to the heel of the shoe here, one thing I did notice in this, I don't really know what to call it, but it seems like it's keeping the nylon in place here. It's kind of this harder rubber material here. There's also some 3M splashes as well, but again, the material is very different. It's a lot sturdier than the rest of the sneaker. Even where the eyelets are, it's a lot more flexible and a lot I don't know, cheaper maybe, I'm not sure, than this material on the back. On the outsole of the shoe here, regular Yeezy 700 version one outsole, that classic outsole here with the visible boost right underneath it. And on the insole of the shoe, don't see any Ortholite branding, but I guess with the boost, we don't really need Ortholite this time around. So regular Yeezy insole here, a little bit flimsy, but it is what it is with the Yeezy branding and the Adidas branding on the heel. And that's pretty much it when it comes to the minivan 700s. I don't know why it's called a minivan. I do know that people have talked about Kanye's lyrics where he talked about having a fat friend like a minivan or something. I'm not quite sure what that is, but it is what it is. But here's the funny thing about this sneaker. We haven't seen a lot of this sneaker. And in my opinion, it's already starting to lose its star power. And I find that very interesting because normally when a new Yeezy model comes out, people go through a few iterations and a few colorways to decide whether or not this is going to be a keeper or this is going to be a sleeper, one that they're not going to kind of put on their feet or not really wear anymore. But I'm going to tell you, this one seemed to go out of style kind of quick. Now, it's not to say that the new colorways that are coming out, people are not going to gravitate towards. That's also not to say that this sneaker is not comfortable. I do believe that the sneaker is comfortable, and I will also say quality, yet again, is on point. I don't know what Adidas is doing with Yeezys, but with Yeezys, we don't see nearly the quality issues and the quality control issues that we do see with a lot of Nike sneakers for whatever that reason. But from the time the first 700 minivan came out to the time that this 700 minivan came out, the prices, especially on the resale markets, have dwindled down tremendously. And I think that has everything to do with the lack of demand on this sneaker, even in a really nice color like this cyan blue. Personally, this is my favorite color of the minivans to drop to date. Outside of, I believe there's a honey color that's getting ready to come, I believe in October, that's more of a yellow kind of golden rodish and black. Now that's gonna be my jam right there. I might need to check those out in person. but. These aren't bad, the blue looks pretty nice. My whole thing is I just don't wanna wear a rain jacket on my feet. And that's pretty much what this feels like with this material here. I was very interested to see what this material was like. And now that I have it in my hand, I can tell it's going to be waterproof. So this is probably gonna be something good to wear out into the elements or what have you. But I'm just personally not really a fan of this material. I mean, listen to that. I don't, I don't wanna hear that on my shoes, you know what I mean? So. This just isn't for me personally. Now, I will say that 3M does pop up very nicely. You guys see the hits of 3M on the back heel of the shoe. You also see the hits of 3M on the mud guards of the sneaker. And then, of course, the big 700 and 3M. So with this sneaker, again, you're going to light up like a disco ball when you have these on. So if you ever want to go hiking at night, just tell somebody, look for the 700. Now, while the Cyan Blue 700 might not have completely have been my jam, this one is a different story. Ladies and gentlemen, this here is the Yeezy 500 Tote Light. Now this is a good looking shoe here. The 500 is a really good looking shoe. I don't know what it is about this sneaker. It's always had my attention. I've always felt good about it. I just, I don't know. I know I tend to be a little bit more picky about the materials in Yeezys. And I tend to talk about how that Yeezy 700 version three is a mixture of screen door and leftover materials from maybe Nike's factories that they no longer wanted. So they just blended them together to come up with this weird looking Frankenstein of a Yeezy Yeezy, slap the Yeezy name on it, charge people $200 for it and pretty much finesse the money. But at the same time, the Yeezy 500 is a much better iteration of a different type of style, a different type of silhouette that uses different materials, but this time it works. Now, of course, the entire shoe is taupe light. That's a variation of brown. A lot of people have compared these to the blush Yeezy 500s and typical Kanye. We do have a sneaker that looks eerily similar to another colorway as well. Maybe it's the whole Yeezy for all thing and maybe Kanye didn't want people who missed out on the blush to miss out on that colorway. So they kind of tuned it up a couple of shades 
shades and then they call this one taupe light. But here's the thing, the story is in the materials with the sneaker and how well it's done. I love the hits of the nappy suede that go down the back of the sneaker and the back panels here, down the eyelets of the shoe and around the toe box and the mud guards as well. Really nice soft suede. I really like the breathable mesh in the panels of the sneaker going all the way up the shoe and into the heel of the shoe. It's very, very soft. I even like the Adaprene outsole. It's growing on me a little bit more. The more that we look at the Adaprene outsole mixed in with the Ortholite insole on this shoe, the more I like it in terms of comfort and wearability. This is a very wearable shoe. It's very comfortable. But that's not my favorite part. My, my favorite part, you guys know I love the details. So this is my favorite part of the 500s. It's this leather right here. This leather here is very soft, very premium feeling. And I'm going to show you guys what it looks like a little better on the medial side. On the medial side of the shoe here, you guys can see it a little bit more pronounced, very soft, very premium feeling leather material. Very, very nice. Also taking a top down look at the shoe here in typical Yeezy fashion, there's always this place on the toe box where the shoe tends to kind of fork like this. And you can see some really nice leather hits right down here on the bottom of the toe box as well. I love those small details. They're also going to get that nice leather going up the tongue of the shoe as well, right by the 3M piping. I like it. It's subtle on this one. I think that's the thing I like about the 3M piping on the 500. It's not overt. It's not too much. It's just enough. I feel like the 3M on the 700 is a lot. And as far as the insole, like I mentioned, or the light co-branded insole with Adidas and Yeezy. And let me tell you guys something, you can feel the difference when you're wearing Ortholite insole in your shoe versus when you do not. Now, my personal opinion, is Ortholite better than Boost? Mm, the jury's kind of out on that one. But in my personal opinion, no, I don't think that Ortholite is better than Boost mixed in with the Adaprene, but it is a nice replacement for Boost, so I'm not mad at it. But again, with the 700s with the Boost in it, dropping prices down to 240, and these sneakers still going, I believe, for about $200, you can kind of go either way on it. And guys, that is pretty much all of the sneakers that I want to show you guys today. These are my most recent pickups. Now, again, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, the question of the day is, are too many sneakers coming out? Are brands just dropping too many sneakers? And if you want my opinion, my answer is yes. It's hard, first of all, to keep up with all of these different sneaker releases, with all these different stories, all these different designs, all these different collaborations and designers that are coming out with these sneakers. And my concern about all these sneakers dropping is that we're not appreciating shoes the way that we should appreciate sneakers. If you guys were around way back in the day when Jordan brand retros were only dropping once, maybe every couple of months, and they definitely weren't dropping Nike shoes and all these different shoes as much as they are, we actually had a lot more time to appreciate our sneakers. We had time to wear them, to put fits together with them, to get people to ooh and ah over them, maybe even for a restock, things like that. But lately, it just seems like all of these companies are just turning into money machines just trying to pump out more shoes and more shoes and more shoes. And it's not until we stop buying the sneakers that they're going to stop making so many sneakers. So I don't know. Maybe the issue is with us. Maybe the problem is with us as consumers. We're telling the brands and sending a very clear message by selling everything out that we want more of it and we want it as fast as we can possibly get it. Now, who's buying all these sneakers for their personal collection? I'm not sure. I mean, I know I bought them all, but that's because I buy all these sneakers to show to you guys. So that's different. But are you guys buying up all these sneakers like this or all these sneakers dropping, giving you guys the ability to pick something else up if you missed out on something that you really wanted? Or because we're in the bot boy era, are we simply looking at bots eating up a lot of different sneakers and being resold to us for ridiculous prices? So how do you guys feel about where we are with sneakers right now? Do you guys feel like too many shoes are coming out lately? Are you guys cool with how many shoes are coming out lately, sound off down below. Let me know. I'm really interested to dialogue with you guys about that one. Of course, while you're down in the comments, make sure that you click on that subscribe button so we can welcome you into the Sneaker Fetish family to make sure you don't miss out on any more heat that comes through like these because I guarantee you, I got a lot more heat on the way. As always, I want to thank you guys for joining me here today on Sneaker Fetish, taking a look at all of these with me. I go by the name of Kari. This is the Air Max 97 Puerto Rico, the Yeezy 700 minivan in cyan blue, the Michigan State Dunk Low, the Fragment Dunk Highs, the Yeezy 500 Taupe Light, and the Jordan 6 Electric Green. And until next time, I'm out.